You're banned from the culinary world. Not long ago, I was celebrated as a young prodigy chef who achieved three Michelin stars faster than anyone in history. But now. I'm living a life of downfall due to false accusations. I never intended to step into a kitchen again, but I couldn't ignore the SOS from the beautiful manager I met at the inn, pleading, please. Help us, so here I was, back in the kitchen once again. Little did I know that this decision would set my halted fate back into motion. My name is Alex Brown. In my early 30s, I won a top prize in an international cooking contest and was hailed as a young genius chef, frequently featured in the media. My cookbooks became bestsellers, I was welcomed as the head chef at a top hotel, and I cooked for VIPs abroad multiple times. After working at the hotel for three years, I opened my own restaurant. Naturally, the restaurant thrived and earned Michelin stars. Even after a year, media coverage didn't stop, and I think I became intoxicated with my own talent. However, success often breeds jealousy. The recipe for my new dish, which I was planning to enter into the next competition, was stolen without being realized. Unaware, I submitted the dish to the competition, only to find out that the menu had been unveiled at another restaurant the day before. Despite explaining it was a misunderstanding, I was accused of plagiarism, disqualified from the competition, and my downfall began. The same media that once praised me now relentlessly reported my plagiarism scandal, with reporters swarming my home and restaurant at all hours. Customers stopped coming to my restaurant, and I had to close down all 10 of my branches nationwide. Exhausted and seeking a place where no one knew me, I left my apartment. I decided to head to the place where my great-grandfather grew up. Although my great-grandfather had passed before I was born, I had heard from my grandmother that he was a chef, and I felt a connection to my roots. After a journey of transfers by train and bus, I arrived in Maine. Though it was Maine, it was in the rural part, essentially the countryside. The nostalgic landscape was filled with rice fields and a mix of old and new buildings in the village. Since there were almost no tourists, outsiders stood out. People looked at me curiously, but no one seemed to know who I was. Relieved, I walked through the town and saw an old culinary inn. The building looked old but sturdy and grand. I decided to stay there for a while. Inside, the inn was old but elegant. When I rang the bell at the empty front desk, a woman in a classy dress appeared from behind the curtain. Sorry to keep you waiting. Welcome. She greeted me with a smile that was as radiant as a flower. People often compare women to flowers, but she truly embodied that comparison. I was captivated for a moment. Sir? Is something wrong? Her words brought me back to reality. Sorry, um, do you have a room available starting today? She probably thought I was strange. My gaze naturally lowered. Then my eyes caught her delicate, fair fingers. Her modestly manicured fingers had no ring. She looked to be in her early thirties. Was she single despite her beauty at this age? My heart started pounding. How long will you be staying? Her voice suddenly brought me back to the present. How long will you be staying? She repeated the same question. Sorry, I haven't decided yet, I said. She seemed to understand. Understood. For long-term stays, we settle the bill weekly. Is that acceptable? Of course, that's fine. After settling the bill for the first week, the woman loaded my luggage onto a cart. Sorry for the late introduction. I am the manager of this inn, my name is Ashley. She led the way and introduced herself. Nice to meet you, Ashley. When we reached the room, Ashley made coffee for me. Her graceful movements were mesmerizing. I couldn't take my eyes off her. It makes me nervous when you stare at me like that. With a slightly troubled smile, Ashley served the coffee and sweets. Sorry, I was captivated by your elegant movements. Oh, I'm sure you're quite popular with the ladies, Mr. Brown. Ashley chuckled as she placed the coffee on the table. She was probably used to receiving such advances. She brushed it off smoothly. The thought that she might have seen it as a come on made me feel incredibly embarrassed. Our inn takes pride in its cuisine. We have fresh ingredients and our head chef is very skilled, so please look forward to it. Let us know if you have any food preferences or allergies. With that, Ashley left the room. A few days later. As Ashley had mentioned on the first day, the food at the inn was quite good. This inn is really thriving.
Everyone always seems busy, I said to one of the waitresses who came to serve me. It seemed to be frequently used by locals for celebrations and memorial services. She replied, we've been fortunate to have the support of locals since the previous owner, but then her voice trailed off. The reason was that the head chef had recently changed. Then the waitress quickly excused herself and left. One day, as usual, I had a spa all to myself and was thinking, this is bliss. On my way back to my room when I passed some guests who had just finished their meal. The snippets of their conversation caught my attention, it's not bad, but the food's quality has dropped, well, Kevin's cooking was exceptional. Indeed, the menu is quite repetitive now. It appeared that the former head chef, Kevin, had been highly regarded. And many guests now stayed out of loyalty despite feeling the current chef's cooking wasn't up to par. Even though I intended to leave the culinary world behind, such comments piqued my curiosity about the previous chef's cooking. The former head chef, huh? My murmured words made Ashley, who was walking toward me, stop in her tracks. Oh, Ashley. Seeing her suddenly stop, I called out to Ashley. The former head chef was my father. He passed away a few years ago, and now Robert has taken over. I see. I overheard some guests saying Kevin's cooking was exceptional, so I was curious about what kind of food your father made. Ashley blinked a few times. Are you interested in cooking, Mr. Brown? No, I'm more of a specialist in eating. I dodged the question casually. If it got out that I could cook, it might lead to more trouble. Are you enjoying the food here? It's delicious. But, don't you think it's time to stop calling me Mr. Brown? When I suggested this, Ashley looked puzzled. Is there a problem with it? Well, I've been staying here for a week now, and this inn is starting to feel like home to me. Being called Mr. Brown feels a bit too formal. Ashley thought about it for a moment. Then, how about Alex? That sounds good. I agreed, feeling satisfied. Got it, I'll call you that from now on. Ashley replied with a smile and then disappeared into the busy kitchen. I've been in this town for a week, and with nothing much to do, walking has become my daily routine. There are several walking routes, and I've started to become familiar with the residents I meet during my strolls. At first, we only exchanged greetings, but now we have casual conversations. And recently they've even invited me for coffee on their porches or occasionally into their homes for meals. In return, I help out with small chores like weeding their gardens or painting walls. It's a way to pass the time, get to know the locals, and carve out a place for myself here. Days passed quickly this way. One day, as I was returning from my routine walk, I heard voices arguing near the inn staff entrance. One of the voices was Ashley's. The other sounded like a man's. You can't just spring this on us. It's not sudden, I've been telling you for a while. That's a different matter. Anyway, it's up to you to decide. The man said this and left without noticing me. I hesitated to call out to Ashley and decided to walk away. The next morning, I woke up early and got ready for a walk. When I came down to the lobby, I saw Ashley on the phone, looking pale. Is something wrong? I felt hesitant to ask in the middle of her call, but when she finished and our eyes met, I couldn't help but inquire. We have a wedding reception scheduled for this afternoon, but Robert collapsed and can't make it. Ashley looked devastated as she lowered her eyes. Ashley, the ingredients for today have arrived. Please accept them for now. I'm going to see Robert. It seemed the staff were quite panicked. I'm sorry to pry, but did Robert have a sudden illness? He says he collapsed, but in reality, it seems I upset him. Anyway, I need to go convince him. I grabbed Ashley's arm to stop her as she was about to leave. I had a gut feeling that letting her go wasn't the right move. It was just an instinct. Today's reception is hosted by a prominent local family. If we can't serve the food, not only will we have to pay a large cancellation fee, but we might not be able to continue running this in here. It would affect not just me, but all our employees. Ashley tried to pull her arm away. Can you let me handle the cooking for the reception? That's impossible. You're not even a chef. She looked at me in disbelief. I may not be a chef now, but I used to be one. Ashley looked stunned. You were a chef? I left the profession before coming here. I even worked in a hotel kitchen, so I think I can help. She bit her lip hard. 
please help us. With that, she led me to the kitchen. I started by checking the ingredients. Although my specialty isn't the local cuisine of this region, as a professional, I have a good grasp of various culinary styles. I excel at creating fusion dishes that combine with local foods. Leave it to me. As I looked over the ingredients, I began giving directions to the kitchen staff. At first, they seemed bewildered that a mere guest was taking charge, but Ashley's words, everyone, follow Alex's instructions, got them moving. We didn't have much time before the reception. I checked what was missing, gathered what we needed, and proceeded to cook the dishes in the order they would be served. That's amazing. Who is that guy? I don't really know what his title is. I could hear the surprised voices of the staff and Ashley talking about me. But this was not the time for that. I was driven solely by the desire to help Ashley. The preparations went smoothly, and the reception started as planned. In both the kitchen and the dining area, everyone was running around like a storm. I kept cooking, wiping the sweat from my forehead. It was a long-lost feeling of being completely absorbed in the cooking. Dessert is ready. With that announcement, the tension in my body finally eased. I didn't know how things were going in the banquet hall, but at least we had made it this far without any complaints. As I let out a sigh and was about to take off my apron, a staff member in charge of serving rushed into the kitchen, saying, the guests are asking to see today's head chef. I froze. Was there something wrong with the food? I quickly tidied up my appearance and stepped out of the kitchen, where Ashley was waiting for me. This way. The guests were very pleased and would like to thank the head chef personally. Oh, that's a relief. I felt all the tension leave my body. I smiled and faced the man who was the host of today's event, a prominent local figure. The food today was excellent. Are you the new head chef here? I recognized the elderly man. He was the chairman of a leading construction machinery manufacturer, known even outside the industry. His nephew had recently made his debut in politics. No wonder Ashley was so desperate, they were a well-known family in this rural area. I had met him once at a VIP party when I was working in a hotel kitchen. It was just a brief greeting a few years ago, so he probably didn't remember me. I'm honored by your compliments. Well, really, this is the second time I've had such delicious food. The first was at a party a few years ago. Today was an important occasion to celebrate my nephew's wedding locally. Thank you for the wonderful meal. Mr. Johnson joyfully grabbed my hand and shook it vigorously. His genuine words stirred something within me. When your father ran this place, we often used it. After his unfortunate passing, I heard the inn was struggling, but with a chef like you. It should be fine. I'll definitely come back for a meal privately. He then turned to Ashley, looking very satisfied. Thank you. It's an honor to be a part of the memorable wedding reception for your nephew. With that, the reception ended smoothly, and Ashley and I, along with the other staff, saw the guests off. Thank you so much for today. Thanks to you, we were able to keep the inn from closing. Ashley appreciated me deeply. I'm just glad I could help. Still, I was surprised. I didn't know you were the chef of a Michelin three stars restaurant. I'm a former chef. I'm not in the business anymore. Ashley looked down, seemingly lost in thought. What's wrong? She started speaking hesitantly, avoiding eye contact. I saw you in the kitchen, Alex, and you look so alive, so happy. It was clear how much you love cooking. Oh, thank you. Not knowing how to respond, I could only say that before Ashley said goodnight and quickly left. The next day, having returned from tentative head chef to just a guest, I spent the day leisurely, as if yesterday had been a dream. I had a spa again, and after a refreshing soak, I returned to my room to find Ashley preparing dinner. Thank you so much for yesterday. Not at all. It was a great experience for me to manage the kitchen and receive such appreciation from the guests after so long. So, is Robert coming back? Ashley paused for a moment. I still haven't been able to contact Robert. But the menu for the guests' meals is planned out for the next month, so we should be fine. It seemed she thought I was worried about my own meals. What about events like banquets or dinner parties, like yesterday? Ashley's face clouded over. If Robert doesn't come back, would it be alright if I filled in? 
Ashley looked up quickly at my suggestion. If it's not too much trouble for you. No, really, I'm happy to help if I can. Her happiness was so evident that it made me a little embarrassed. If you could help out at the inn, Alex, it would be wonderful. I thought it might be presumptuous of me to offer, so I was hesitant to bring it up. Me too. I wanted to ask, but I thought it would be too forward, so I didn't say anything. We both looked at each other and laughed. It felt good to be relied upon by Ashley. As I enjoyed the last bit of hospitality as a guest, I watched Ashley smile. Just as we were talking, another attendant arrived. Ashley, there's an urgent call for you. I'll be right there. Please take over for me. Ashley stood up, entrusted my service to the attendant, and left. Seems like things are busy. After yesterday, Mr. Johnson, the guest from yesterday, praised our inn's cuisine highly. We've been getting several inquiries from afar about hosting meals and banquets here. The front desk staff are thrilled but overwhelmed. It appeared the staff were unaware of Robert's absence. I decided to keep quiet about it. More importantly, it looked like things were going to get busier. That night, I went to bed thinking about new menu ideas. I realized I loved cooking more than I thought. The next day, I was welcomed into the kitchen by the staff. The following days were a whirlwind. I juggled a packed schedule, and even after the day ended, I stayed in the kitchen, coming up with new dishes. Initially, most guests came through Mr. Johnson's connections, but gradually, word spread via social media and reviews. Amidst the hectic days, the inn became famous, and Ashley was featured in the media as the beautiful manager. Many requests for interviews as the head chef came in, but I declined them all. If my face got out, my past would be dug up, and it would lead to sensational reporting again. That could bring trouble to the inn that was just starting to thrive. I wanted to remain behind the scenes, supporting Ashley. Ashley, not being very media savvy herself, generally declined interviews and stepped in for me when necessary. I built good relationships with the staff and grew closer to Ashley, finding my place here. Alex, you finally have a day off tomorrow. We had planned to go shopping together for the first time in two weeks. Sorry for not giving you any breaks. It's all right. Working with you is enjoyable, Ashley. I enjoy working with you too, but a day off is different, right? There's no event tomorrow, and the assistant manager will handle the guests. So you can take it easy. Seeing Ashley so excited made me feel happy too. The next day, as we were heading to the employee entrance to go out, I saw a familiar man waiting. Did you think you could take over the head chef position so easily? It was Robert, the head chef who had been out of contact. What do you want now? You've been unreachable. Ashley retorted sharply to Robert. You're the one who abandoned your job, and Alex stepped in to help us. There's no place for you at this inn anymore. You're being deceived by this man. If you keep him here, he'll bring the whole inn down. With that, Robert thrust a tabloid magazine at Ashley, open to a specific page. Where did you get this? It was an article about the plagiarism scandal that had led me to quit being a chef. No matter how much I insisted it was a lie, the media wouldn't stop, and I was branded as a dishonest chef who stole recipes. I didn't want to be in the spotlight anymore, I just wanted to use my skills for the people I cared about and live quietly. Now. My secret was revealed to the one person who I didn't want to know. I don't believe such an article. Alex doesn't need to steal anyone's recipes. Ashley said confidently to Robert. I was stunned by her unwavering trust in me. The truth doesn't matter. The public believes it. Isn't that enough? If you stay with this guy, the inn's reputation will suffer. Fire him and let me come back. When Robert tried to grab Ashley's hand, I instinctively swatted it away. What are you doing? Can't handle the truth, so you resort to violence? Regardless of my situation, a chef who abandons the kitchen isn't much of a chef. Don't you love cooking? Don't you have any pride as a chef? Robert burst into laughter. He clutched his stomach as if he couldn't contain his amusement. Love cooking? Hearing a famous chef say something so naive is hilarious. Get real. He reached for Ashley's hand again, but this time she shook it off and moved behind me. I already rejected your proposal. Leave me alone. 
She peeked over my shoulder, glaring at Robert with genuine disgust. I was going to handle this quietly, but if that's your attitude, I'll spread this all over the media and social networks. Disgraced chef working as head chef here. You'll be ruined. Go ahead, do as you like. Alex's cooking speaks for itself. Those who appreciate it will know the truth. We won't be defeated by your threats. Ashley responded defiantly, making me laugh. Why are you laughing, Alex? Being with you makes my past seem unimportant. The tense atmosphere suddenly lightened. Sure, spread it all over the media or social media. I'll just keep making food that people love. Let's go, Ashley. Wait, we're not done here. Robert was interrupted by another voice. A lowly chef like you trying to ruin his future? Know your place. The voice was commanding and filled with anger, making us stop in our tracks. It was Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson? Why are you here? Your cooking reminded me. The dish that moved me at a party years ago, that was you, wasn't it? You remember that? Mr. Johnson smiled at me, then turned to Robert with a stern expression. I did some investigating. You were an assistant on the rival team in that competition. And you worked in the pastry section of Alex's hotel until just days before. In the hotel kitchen, we worked as a team. Since the pastry section handled desserts, their kitchen was separated. As I was in charge of main dishes, I didn't even know Robert worked there. Were you in the same workplace? I also spoke to your former colleagues. My guess is that you stole the recipe and gave it to the rival team, didn't you? Robert started trembling. I'm a fan of his cooking. I'll keep investigating to clear his name. Robert backed away as Mr. Johnson pressed him, then turned and ran off. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. No need to thank me. Being able to enjoy your cooking locally is a dream come true for me. Ashley and I appreciated Mr. Johnson deeply. After that, Robert was banished from the area. Rumor has it that he was completely expelled from the culinary world. Soon after, thanks to Mr. Johnson, my name was cleared, and the inn became incredibly successful, never short of guests. Furthermore, the inn was awarded three Michelin stars. After that, we started getting many international visitors, and the inn's cuisine gained worldwide recognition. On a rare day off, Ashley and I visited her father's grave. We reported the inn's success and our engagement. On the next break, we planned to visit the grave of my great-grandfather, who led me to this place. And decades later. That wedding reception was unforgettable, wasn't it? Even after 30 years, Ashley often talks about our reception. Our wedding was grand, with Mr. Johnson and his wife acting as our witnesses. The reception was held at the inn, and I, the groom, personally cooked for the guests. With you in the kitchen, I had to sit at my table alone. I know, I'm sorry about that. But cooking was the only way I could think of to show my gratitude to the guests. It's so like you, and I love it. It's still a wonderful memory. The inn we've managed for 30 years will soon be taken over by our children. After working tirelessly for so long, we're looking forward to enjoying our retirement and all the things we'll do together.